before we begin, thank you very much to Agro Crow for joining my Patreon campaign. Thank you so much for the generosity and the support. It means the world to me. I... <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was done. I was caught up. You people will not let it stop. I did the math, by the way. It is 93 days now since I have done my normal intro. You have kept it going that long. That is absurd. Thank you so much for it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I keep saying it. it's got to stop eventually, right? Right? Eventually, I'll get to use my old intro, which, like, really, I shouldn't even, I should never use the old intro. I feel like I need a new one after so long. Oh, man. But thank you so much like it's meant the world to me uh also i know if you're uh i know a lot of people can't do the patreon thing right now times are tough etc i get it uh but if you haven't hit like and subscribe please hit the subscribe button it's free and it helps the channel a lot uh and like i'm coming close to a really big milestone so like i would really love to see that number get up there so that would mean a lot to me too okay may the fourth be with you because I am legally obligated as a geek on the internet to say that at some point. So it is Star Wars Day, and because we are a Transformers-centric channel, yes, I'm, I'm kind of legally obligated to discuss Star Wars here. So we're going to go into the history of Star Wars Transformers. Now, we're not we're going to touch a little bit on what else Star Wars has done within the Transformers uh, realm, but it is thin, admittedly. A lot of it is in referential stuff in G1. Now, in the original cartoon, you could find the original Star Wars sound effects all over the place. Uh, it's just a stock sound library that uh, Sunbow happened to use a few sound effects from from time to time. Uh, in particular, uh, you could hear lightsabers flaring to life in uh, quite, a few, quite a few scenes in Transformers. Now, that's little stuff. What you see on screen is from Transformers Victory, where, yes, it's very obvious R2-D2 and C-3PO are walking in the foreground. Uh, you'll also find references in Victory to Harrison Ford uh, as Indiana Jones and, of course, uh, Carrie Fisher as prin in uh, Princess Leia hair buns. Uh, so you, you get a little bit of that in there, too. It's weird that it's the Japanese series that does the homage, but I guess legally that's a lot easier than... Uh, than the American cartoon would have been. But <clears throat> it's been a very loose connection. There's a very loose connection there with the original Transformers and Star Wars. Um, the strengthening becomes when we get into a toy line called A Tactics, which was a battle figure game that had, you know, that came out with a few different franchises, but like the big two that had a tactics figures were Transformers and Star Wars. Actually, if I'm right about a tactics, it might be the only two to it might be the only two franchises that were used. Point being, the two were compatible with each other, and as you see here, did have artwork that incentivized and encouraged you to mix and match your Transformers and your Star Wars characters. So that's kind of where we start off, but um, we 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 know the real meat of this, right? So. What you're looking at, obviously, since it's a Cybertron, this is around this is around 2004, 2005. But in 2005, we got uh, what was essentially the first time that we got like serious crossover stuff with Transformers, and that was the Star Wars Transformers line. This was a really weird and exciting line uh, if you were a fan back then, because it was so just out of nowhere that Transformers was suddenly doing vehicles from a different franchise and doing fantasy sci-fi vehicles, no less, of popular characters. It was a really big departure from what Transformers had been doing for, you know, at, at that point, 20 years. It was cool to see, you know, and, and it made sense. You know, Hasbro has, the, has had the master license for Star Wars almost forever. Like, it was a Kenner thing, and then when Hasbro bought Kenner... They integrated it, so they really have never lost it since then. It's pretty incredible. So the idea of two of their longest-running brands having cross-compatible toy line, yeah, that is actually pretty freaking cool. So what you see here is one of the first Wave 1 figures, absolutely obvious, Darth Vader, as, as the TIE advance. That's, you know, what you would expect. Now, Wave 1 
had some issues. Uh, Wave 1 in particular, the plastic quality was pretty low. They're known to be more fragile and uh, prone to yellowing a lot more than future waves. So if you go back and want to get any of these for the sake of nostalgia, stick to the repaints of Wave 1. Uh, with one exception, because I'm not even sure they repainted, repainted it. We'll get there. But if you are not aware of these, if you've not seen these before, um, to my knowledge, uh, uh, to my knowledge, Takara was not involved in the production of these. Um, the transformation, the engineering on them seems far simpler, uh, more akin to what uh, Transformers Titanium toys were. Though these are, admittedly, better built, they still feel weird as Transformers. There is something off about the engineering to them that they don't really live up to toys even of that time. So it's really just the novelty of here's a nice Star Wars vehicle and it happens to transform into Darth Vader. So we get by on that novelty. And there's tons of these. Obviously, there are tons of these. On this channel, we have discussed Luke Skywalker. In fact, we talked about two of his in the crossovers line, the X-Wing and the Snowspeeder. These are not great. Um, uh, this, these are ancient videos, by the way, in glorious 480p, if you want to go back and watch them. Uh, this, yeah, my, my opinion on these really hasn't changed over the years. They're still pretty bad. They're still pretty bad, even for the time. Now, it's not to say there isn't a novelty, not to say there isn't an appeal. We'll get to that here in a bit. We have to talk about another sect of this before we discuss that particular part. But needless to say, they're not a stranger to the channel. And that's largely because the earlier figures were kind of poorly received. Um, at least amongst Transformer fans, they were. Because overall, they just did too much... They did too many things incorrectly as far as, like, we were concerned. Number one, the toys themselves had... Like, the toy line itself heavily relied on repaints and retools. This Jedi Starfighter, here's a trivia fact for TJ Omega. I was originally developing a Plastic Addict episode for the Jedi Starfighter figure. Now, the toy itself is just okay. Uh, as far as that toy line is concerned, it's okay. But the the what what got to the point of, like, now this toy is actually bad is just how many times they reused it. Literally any Jedi they could justify got this mold and that included even darth vader okay okay so we put in one sith all right fine um i'm sure he used it in the comic book or something i'm sure there's some lore where he flew one of these instead of a tie fighter oh well but yeah um yeah like the toy itself is just kind of dull it just it just kind of is like i hate to like i hate to put it that way um, largely, yeah, like, these early run figures did have a lot of weirdness to them. Uh, you can see with Boba Fett here, too. Um, largely that does come from, A, a team with less experience with the engineering process of a Transformer, but also because the gimmick to this line was that they all had a cockpit and a micro figure that you could put in the cockpit. So it actually functioned like a very small version of a Star Wars toy. And it's a neat little trick, but when you think about it, a lot of no Star Wars vehicle was ever intended to transform into a robot of any kind. There's not a lot of bulk to work with on some of these. You imagine trying to make a Y-Wing fighter into a Transformer? You know, and I mean like even a classic Y-Wing. I know they did it for some of the, 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 uh, the original ones. Some of the prequel ones, yes, they did those. But... A big, it meant like a big chunk of this toy's engineering had to go into a hollow cavity in the center of the toy that really couldn't do anything, and it cost them a lot of bulk to make the robot out of. So I think it ultimately hampered things. Um, and ultimately, and there's also just, yeah, there's there's a lot of places where you can see the team just really didn't know what to do with some of these things. Uh, the AT-80 -AT is a good example. Uh, the, the chicken leg snow trooper. Uh, this is one of those that we just kind of laughed at, I think. I mean, it's cool. A transforming AT-AT -AT is cool. It also looks silly. Uh, and we as a Transformer fan would wonder, where did that big bulk of, like, where did all that mass in the back of this vehicle go? Wouldn't that flip out the arms and legs a lot easier? And then all this would just be, like, 
back kibble because it really looks terrible as arms and legs. No, 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 no. We're going to use them as the legs. We're going to use them as the legs. <clears throat> he's he's going to look he's going to look like an android from the waist down, which is weird considering he's a robot. But you get my point. You get my point. It's going to look <laughs> we want him to look like you broke two of your toys at the waist and you glued the wrong bottom to the wrong top. That's what we want the toy to look like. Uh, my favorite was the Emperor. Aside from the fact that he had to be an Imperial shuttle because it's the only vehicle he's associated with. Um, it also means that uh, he he's not in black robes and he just has this really weird gremlin head. I don't know why. It's, it's a weird, it's a really weird one. I think at this point, a lot of these just kind of became laughable because they were, you could tell where they were struggling to make these designs work. Um, there's also silliness. Like you can see it here where the lightsabers for the toys were always used as the missiles. And if you want to know how poorly thought out these were, that means the painted part of the toy is being projected and banged into things all the time. So if you see these and the bottom of the lightsaber has a lot of wear on it, that'd probably be why. That'd probably be why. This was the ambitious one in wave one. I thought this was actually really cool that they went for is the wheel bike. Because I, I never got my hands on this one, but ultimately, like, it doesn't look bad. Like, considering what they had to work with, I think this is about as good as they could make it. You know, and like I said, it's just an interesting vehicle to make a Transformer out of. Uh, even if it does mean he has this big, bulky backpack and you're, you know, prone to being way too back heavy. Um, I don't think this mold was ever repainted or reused. So, unfortunately, like, that Wave 1 poor plastic run is about the only chance you got. Uh, but... Yeah, like, ambition. You know, like, if anything else, I can credit the toy line for ambition, above all. Um, now, th now, that doesn't mean it's universally bad. There are actually some toys in this line that are known to be pretty good for what they are. I think everyone agreed that the Commander Cody Turbo Tank was actually a really good figure. I mean, the shell is a little bit weird, but it wears it kind of well. It looks kind of cool back there. It's like big wings. And yeah, he, ju he just uses his mass to make his body. He is the buffest clone trooper you'll ever see. And yeah, this one came out really nice. I could think everyone really liked this one. Now, as far as like talking about how ambitious this line got, they did try to go up a little bit in size from time to time. The Millennium Falcon was the way to get Han Solo and Chewbacca in the toy line. And while it's okay... Okay, okay, uh, Han looks a little bit weird here. Uh, you know, unfortunately, ch this one is held back by the fact that Chewbacca suffers from gold plastic. And again, they never repainted it, so he never really had an option to avoid that. Meaning the only example of a transforming Millennium Falcon here in the West is uh, prone to becoming dust. So that was unfortunate. I think much better received was the fact that they made a transforming Death Star, their own supreme class uh, toy. And again, this one is actually kind of impressive. I mean, you got the struts so it can stand up in the in the in the battleship mode. Uh, the laser actually has a launching missile. Uh, you know, you got this really huge, uh, really huge uh, uh, Darth Vader, and the little vehicles to mount around the outside like there's a battle going on. It's a really fun thing, you know. And the like, we can keep in mind, like somewhere in the mid 2000s, it was possible to have three giant transforming balls as like your little like uh like your little solar system of transforming planets or planetoids that's cool i thought that was really cool so the line goes on until about 2008 uh where the toy line proved so popular that they decided to expand it now it was no longer star wars transformers it was transformers crossovers and it also included the other long-running uh, Hasbro IP, Marvel. And these, these are generally okay. Some of them are okay. Some of them are pretty bad. Again, you can definitely tell Takara didn't have a hand in the engineering because it just feels weird. And in a lot of cases, like a lot of the parts just don't feel very well used. Um, now this one, again, this is a line that was somewhat ambitious. Uh, but the most it really went for as far as just like going out there it was this weird Spider-Man Iron Man combiner. That's that's about as much as he got as far as just like 
like really pushing the envelope as far as what these concepts could do. Um, they're okay. And the thing that got by just on the popularity of Marvel. But what it exposed was exactly why Star Wars Transformers did so well. It was not because of the Transformer aspect. We as Transformer fans kind of see the robot mode as the, the, the mode, the main mode for your toy. But keep in mind, for Star Wars collectors, it's going to be the vehicle that's most important. So back then, almost all the vehicles produced, you either had either Micro Machine sized vehicles, or you had ones that were made for the 3 and 3 quarter inch scale, meaning they're either super tiny or super huge. This was a great way of having normal size trans like normal size Star Wars vehicles sitting on a shelf or your favorite one just taking up a little bit of space on your desk without it like encompassing your display space. So it was this beautiful little medium. And to a Star Wars collector, the fact that it could turn into a robot of the character known for that vehicle was just kind of a neat bonus. And in that, I think it found a lot more success, not as a Transformer line with robots, but as a Star Wars line for its vehicles. Now, with the crossovers rebranding, some things did actually change in the line. They dropped the mini pilot gimmick, and that freshened up the line enough to try and, uh, a few different things and some, and I think, overall improve the quality of the toys in general. You can see Cad Bane here actually looks pretty decent. Like, it looks like a, it looks like a competent attempt to make uh, his ship transform into a robot. I don't know how much Cad Bane is in the shape of that robot, but it is better looking than some of the previous examples. It certainly uses the bulk of the vehicle a lot better, and I attribute that to the fact that they didn't have to worry about that big hollow cavity for the mini pilot. Now, this series did, this run did revolve a lot around retools, repaints of previous molds. During crossovers, a lot of the previous lines, a lot of the previous lines toys came back, but without the mini pilot. So, yeah, they, 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 they admit that just across the board really probably wasn't worth it. Um, there was one figure that I think everyone just kind of universally was into when it came out, and it was the Yoda, because I think everyone said the exact same thing. How does that gigantic head fit somewhere in that Star Wars vehicle? It does, uh, and it's a funny little figure. It's probably one of the best ones they made. Now, crossovers only lasted... Three years at best, if we like really stretch it, because uh, I think 2011 only had one, one or two Marvel releases, and then that was it. Um, it went back at 2011. It went back to strictly Star Wars Transformers, again filling with a bunch of repacks and repaints, but also trying a few different things to it. For starters, we had size classes now, and they make a lot more sense than our modern size class numbers and names. Uh, they just went by class 1, class 2, and class 3. And class 1 were the new small, uh, small scale uh, Star Wars Transformers, which I think there's only like four different molds. Like, they went like super cheap on these. They're like really nothing Transformers. Um, just, yeah, I mean... Uh, they're, they were the budget line. They were the ones you got for little kids. But it was an excuse to rerun some characters and, and uh, vehicles that they had done in the early days, uh, just in tiny versions. Um, they were generally not great. Not None of the ones I picked up were generally that impressive. So like I really do feel like it was just to offer something for kids. <clears throat> but, hey, we want to talk ambition. Here's one of the most ambitious Transformers I have ever seen Ever. So this was marketed as a uh, Darth Vader that turns into a Star Destroyer, which is already awesome. However, not only does the robot mode have an Anakin Skywalker mode, the vehicle mode can convert into the Republic Attack Cruiser. So two completely different vehicle modes and two different robot modes. Now, to be fair, a lot of shell forming is involved some part forming is involved, and the toy, no matter what you do with it, is extremely back heavy. But credit where credit is due. This is an extremely ambitious attempt. You know, anytime you're working two vehicles and two robots into the same into the same transformer, 
you're going to have engineering chaos. There's no clean way to do it. So the fact they came even this close and made and still managed to make something that's fairly impressive is actually really cool. Like I give them full credit for that. Now, this is pretty much where the story of Star Wars Transformers ends. The line fizzled out in 2012 and was never to be heard from again. Kinda. So, in the crazy world that is Transformers, Takara decided to take a stab at it themselves in 2018. So, out of nowhere, here comes another attempt at Darth Vader as the TIE advanced. Now, with Takara Engineering behind it, the proportions are better, the detailing is better, the build quality is better, and I do find that it transforms a lot nicer, at least from what I've seen. I've never actually owned it in hand. I will say I do like the look of it better than the version that America produced. And that wasn't all. They ended up doing the exact same thing with their Millennium Falcon, making it a two-piece combiner of both Han Solo and Chewbacca, and... Han looks way better this time. Uh, we will say that certainly. And then uh, something about like wide-shouldered Chewbacca is super intimidating. He looks like Chewbacca wearing a battleship for armor. That's probably the scariest a Wookiee could possibly be. But to this point, that is where Transformers and Star Wars ends its story. We haven't seen anything new on the Takara side, so I don't know if this was just a very short-run license or if the toys just didn't do well in Japan. I certainly would think that if Hasbro actually had the guts to do it, these two releases would do well today as a modern Transformers collaborative figure. Or, you know... They always own those licenses, so it's very possible that they could see a resurgence. We could see another transforming Star Wars vehicle down the line. It's just a matter of Hasbro figuring out the right time to do it. So, maybe this isn't the end of the story. Maybe we got a little bit more to go. Or uh, a s sequel, if you will. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we don't talk about Star Wars sequels anymore. But no, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was educational, or at the very least nostalgic for those who grew up with these. And if you're a Star Wars fan that was into these because they were Star Wars vehicles, let me know. I actually want to know if I am on base when it comes to what made these popular. If it was the fact that, I don't, because I don't think it was the novelty of being a Transformer uh, that was a Star Wars vehicle. I think it was the reverse. I think the appeal was Star Wars collectors who just thought the transforming part was a nice bonus. So, I'm actually curious. Uh, let me know in the comments below where you stand on these. And thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face. The algorithm. And I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.